God and Heavenly Father. We give praise to your holy name. We just ask, Lord, that in the moments ahead, as the word that is broken for us might feed our souls, Lord, and that you might communicate with us that which you would have us do. Lord, we pray for Brother Jones and ask that you touch his young life, Lord, as he's running between churches and trying to get to at the same day. Oh, just bless him. Let his, when he gets there, if he's not already there, let his body catch up with his spirit. And Lord, just help him through uh, all things as he tries to serve you. Father, we're going to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Forgive us of our many sins, for they are many. It's in Christ Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. So, let me tell you, I forgot, and Brother White, I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer. We were over at Little Ben, and all of a sudden, Wanda Patton said, I've got to go home. And we got her calmed down enough and feeling a little bit better, and we got her kids to come and get her and take her to the house. And Brother White, pray for her right now. Our Father, we come to you on a special moment here to bless Miss Patton, bless her and her family. May she be all right where she can be back. She's one of the leaders of that church and take care of them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 So, how do you get your news, folks? Do you still watch TV? Yeah. How, do you look on the computer to see what the news flashes are? Yeah. What about somebody texting you or sending you an email? Do you ever do that? Yeah. We get news a lot of different ways. But uh, I never will forget, I had been homesick with a virus, this black. And uh, I had walked in to my mother's living room with a bowl of Rice Krispies and was going to sit down uh, crosswise in that old brown nylon loop chair, Mike. You remember the one that was right there across from the color TV? And I was going to watch as the stomach turns. Ah, oh, as the world turns. <laughs> wow. While, while I was eating my Rice Krispies. And Walter Cronkite came on and said, Flash from Dallas. The president had been shot. And then it wasn't but just a few minutes he came back. It's been announced that President Kennedy's dead. You get a news like that, and you remember when you heard the news, you know. I, I fainted sick Sunday, and I stayed home over to neighbor's house. And I watched on TV as Lee Harvey Oswald was shot by Jack Ruby. Watched him coming out. I said, oh, no, and saw him kill him right there. Uh, when you are in a moment where there is something that has happened, okay, uh, it, it gets emblazoned in your mind, all right? Does anybody, now other than that, does anybody have an incident that happened in their lives to where you remember what happened? Anybody? Want to share with us? September 11th. September 11th. Where were you? I was at school in the library when you came across the TV. You were at school in the library and it came across the TV? In high school, yeah. I think it was freshman year, high school. Wow. Now yeah, that's been a while, Ed. Man. And were you with people? I mean, were you running with your buddies? Did y'all stop and talk about it? 
it was kind of in a study hall the whole, the whole school stopped everything yeah everything halted everybody was watching the news well you know now we've got news on tv and then we've got tmz and what's the other sally the shows that come on with news about celebrities and so forth <coughs> Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight. That's one of them. And there's some others. By the way, have you noticed <coughs> that on ABC that they've had two of their reporters and they're going to get fired if they're not fired already because they're married but not to each other. And they had a little get together. In fact, their get-together, their sin was so much in the news, okay, that is on TV. They, they've taken pictures of them, you know, public displays of affection that weren't just a little peck on the cheek. It was more detailed than that. Folks, God's word is God's word is God's word, period. Now, if you go out here in the lobby and you look to the right on the wall, what's up there? Anybody notice anything up there? The Ten Commandments. Now, in fact, people in Butler County, Kentucky, thought so much of the kids here and they wanted them to know the right way that they put them in every classroom in the county. Well, Butler County is not always populated with local talent. Sometimes people move in here. Sometimes people go into college or to the military service and they come home with a spouse. And this fella came in down at Provo, and this lady was, she was progressive. You know, that's what they call liberals, progressive. And she just thought, although she went to church, she just thought that that was pushing religion down somebody's throat. And her name, last name, Walters. And she went with the American Civil Liberties Union and filed suit against us here. And the case was handed down by the Kentucky Supreme Court that they had to be removed from every school. I don't know if they've still got them used to over the Board of Education, there was hundreds of those things stacked up where they had to take them out of the classroom. Isn't that silly? That is just absolutely nuts. Recently, in the news, what is the big case that you heard handed down from the Supreme Court? The one where they uh, turned back Roe v. Wade. They have said that women, very young women, very early on in the pregnancy can decide to terminate the pregnancy. But other than that, if they want to prohibit it, there was the ability to do that now. And progressives, ladies uh, of uh, the Equal Rights Amendment, and some others have <clears throat> protested against this, organized against this, and so forth. 
And I got to doing some research on this. And uh, this all goes back to the lady that started Planned Parenthood. And let me tell you something. That was just like in the garden. The woman decided that something needed to be a certain way. And the man was there listening. Listen, the man was there listening with her and said, yeah, let's do it. I'm not placing it all on the woman. In fact, I'm trying to preach opposite that is on the man just as much. Adam was right there. He heard it. He could have, he was supposed to lead the household and protect the wife. What did he do? Oh yeah, it looks like a good looking apple. Let me have a bite. Actually, she convinced him to have a bite, but folks, we all, our bucket sits on its own bottom. We each make the choice to sin. Now, my mother was uh, about as strong as a Democrat lady as I've ever met. And she was a hard shell church Christ. And if there's ever a group of people that are ecumenical, it's a group of the Presbyterians. They're very loving people. They'll accept anybody. I mean, we opened our doors and the Church of Christ met here. We didn't charge them a penny. They did give us a love offering, but we never asked them for a penny, did we, my wife? Never did. And the folks that were down by Ace Hardware Ace Hardware got tired of listening to their music. They sing and worship pretty loud and kicked them out. And the opportunity came for us to help one another for the cause of Christ. And we did. And that relationship has been going on. And, uh, you know, we are working for the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Well, it's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That everlasting life is offered to you. All you got to do is take it. Believe on his name. Repent of your sins. And you have salvation. Now, God will take you anywhere you are. But he's not going to leave you there. He will start moving you. Which reminds me of this first passage that we read, wasn't it? That the fellow talked about he was lifted out of the miry clay. How many of you, when you were children, got out in the springtime in the fields and found some clay that you got in and you had on boots, and when you walked across it, it would suck the shoe off your foot or suck the boot off your Yeah. Boy, you get in a mess like that, you got one. And it was a few years ago, I had some boys in the Boy Scouts, it was the first group I had, and uh, I always liked for them to know about Morgantown, you know? Where is Morgantown? Why was it here? And so forth, you know? And the Indians used this place for a lookout of people coming. There's a what they call the rock house. It's actually a little cave, a little cleft in the rock down there that people used to go there for various experiments and so forth. And I wanted them to see the passage around this point 
this ridge that Morgan Hammer was built on. Well, it was a beautiful day like today. Just glorious outside. Sun shining. It was a little chilly, but if you had a jacket on and you were walking, hiking, moving, you, you stayed warm because you were generating quite a bit of heat. Well, <clears throat> I had talked to the boys and this young man wasn't listening. And uh, he had his mind was off somewhere. And we got to this field and we were walking on the grass by the edge of the woods, you know, where the grass absorbs the moisture up and it's not quite as sloppy and syrupy, you know. Well, this young man, he decided, I'm gonna beat him there. And he takes up now, he didn't have lace-up boots to begin with, which I told him, I said, you're going to experience difficulty because of that, but, but come on, you got boots on. But he led off through there, lickety-split, and it started pulling him under. And he got out there and he was crying. Mr. Hawker, come get me. Mr. Hawker, come get me. Somebody help me. And I won't tell you the whole story right now, but sometime when we're cranking some ice cream or burning a hamburger or something, we'll sit down and I'll tell you all about it. But the little boy was afraid I was going to pry him out of the ground. But when you're mired down in that, when sin has gathered around you and pulled you down in it and every step you take in it is getting worse. Let me tell you something. Frank Norris used to have three points that he talked about sin. He said, first of all, said he'll take you farther than you want to go. Second point is, was it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. And the third one was, it'll cost you more than you want to pay. Sin is like that. Sin is like that. It, that apple looks so good to eat. Well, I'm going to get knowledge. I'm going to be like God. In fact, what she and Adam, I believe their sin was, was they wanted to be their own God. You go home and read it. Think about that. I believe you'll find that they really wanted to be on the same level with God. And we can't do that. God is God. He is the creator. We are his creation. And we're to bring glory to his name. We've got an opportunity, folks, to live in this old world. And like my mother said, we're talking about abortion and so forth said, why are you not talking about premarital sex? Not doing that. Folks, it's got so bad, and I'm not talking about AIDS. I'm not even talking about herpes. But there is a sexually transmitted disease now, and you can have it, not realize you have it, but when you're about 25 or 30 years old, it comes back. And girls, if it's untreated, it will start growing cancer. We need to take a stand for righteousness. That means rightness. We need to take a stand that God's word is God's word is God's word. We need to live and love and realize that every one of us in here, we can look at the other one and we need to say, there by the grace go out. I can be in this situation. I'm not above it. 
God has a plan for us. God wants us to come together. God wants us to work together for his glory. And God wants us to let that light shine. Now, I know we're running a little late, but let me tell you this story real quick. In where Jesus grew up, if it was in a pretty big place, the houses weren't like ours, you know, where you had little postage stamp yards out front, a little grass down the side, and a little backyard. It wasn't like that. The houses were slammed up next to each other. The walls, you shared a wall on one side, and the other, you shared a wall with your neighbor on the other side. If you didn't get along good, it could be pretty rough. But they didn't have, normally, there might be one, maybe two windows into the house, and if somebody was really pretty rich, there'd be a opening over here. Well, starting a fire, they didn't have strike anywhere matches back then. I mean, that was a luxury when we got those folks. But anyway, somebody getting ready to go to church, they didn't have refrigeration back then. Ladies went every day to the grocery store. I'm, I'm sorry. The outdoor market and to gather what she was going to prepare to cook for the evening. Well, she didn't want some dog running through the house and knocking over a candle and setting the house on fire. So they would take and they'd blow out all the rest of the candles and they'd take and they'd put one candle in the middle of the largest room, generally, and they would put a clay pot with a rock under the edge, you know, to where it could get enough air. Had a hole in the bottom of that clay pot. And it'd keep the house where there was light when they came back. But let me tell you something. As soon as they came in, and they picked up that bowl. There was light. You could see light. You could see light. And then light began to spread. That's what we're going to do in this world. Let me tell you something. If you're in a dark room and you don't like candles, you'd rather have a kerosene lamp. But if it's dark and they light a candle, you're going to be happy, aren't you? If you're in the dark, you don't care what light it is, you need the light. Let's go take light out into this dark world. May God's name be praised. Amen.